Okay, welcome to the Coding Zoo. This is your first time joining. Uh, welcome, my name is Shane, and this is the HTML Building Block Series. In today's lesson, we're gonna cover a new form input element that is in HTML5. It is the input type of email. We're gonna show you how to use the input type of email. So if you've never used that before in HTML, hey, stick around, we're gonna jump right in. All right, hey, let's go ahead and get started. Our goal at Coding Zoo is to help others learn how to program. So if you have any questions or any comments, if you'd like to see any videos on a particular subject in programming, hey, leave us a comment below, let us know. We will definitely dig into that and get back to you. Let's go ahead and get started. On my desktop, I have an index page as usual. I've set up an index.html. I've got the doc type HTML and I got the header and the body. And I added this form element. Now, in our previous lessons in the HTML building block series, we covered the form element and the field set element. If you're not familiar with that, definitely go check it out and then come back and check out the email element. Um, let's go ahead. I have a legend called input examples, and this is a field set. In this field set, I'm going to add that input type of email. So why have an input type of email address when you could just use a text box. What's the difference? Well, let's check that out. So let's go ahead and type that in. Input type equal email ID equals email address. So I'm gonna use the ID of email address and then the type of email. I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a name, email address. And let's go ahead and close that off. So I'm gonna save it. Go to my browser here. Click refresh. Let's blow that up so you can see it better. Okay. Now let's try typing in a email address. So Shane two. I'm gonna click submit. Whoa. Well. It wouldn't let me submit it. Well, why not? Because it didn't include an at sign. Uh, it did not include that symbol. And it actually tells you that. So that's the big difference, right? It, this form element is smart enough to know, the browser is smart enough to know, hey, well, email address has that symbol in it. And the user needs to provide it. So that's, that's the benefit. That's the benefit of having this type instead of using a text box. It's one of the benefits. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off and submit there we go it submitted it just fine so it actually validates it uh pretty neat all right let's go back to my input here i'm going to add on another attribute i'm going to set a size equal to 64. now the size um is going to specify how big the box is it's not going to specify how long your email address can be. You would do that with max length. So I'm going to put a max length of 64. So now my email address box is 64 and the maximum characters you can put in there or maximum length of what you can enter is 64. Um, so one is the box size. One is actually how many characters you can type. So be sure to know the difference. Sometimes you want to allow them to enter maximum length of length of like a hundred but there's not enough space to have a, a long box right but you don't want to restrict them just because you don't have enough real estate on your screen so you could do a size of 64 and then put a max length of 100 right and it would just move over as you typed it would still let the user uh, put in that information all right i'm going to add one more attribute here I just bumped my uh mic here hopefully that didn't bang your ears just now um, let's go ahead and add another attribute. All right, I'm going to do um, a placeholder. So it supports placeholder, just like other inputs. Add another attribute and 
I'm going to do a pattern. Well, we saw that it validates automatically uh, whether it's an email address or not, but you can actually use the pattern attribute to use a regular expression and even make sure it's like a certain email address or a certain domain, right? So for example, I could do, I could do uh, Gmail domain. So period plus um, at Gmail. So this is gonna validate that whatever you enter is a Gmail domain. So let's save it, Hit refresh. And you'll notice that my uh, element got much bigger. Let's kind of bring that down a little bit. There we go. And you'll notice that the placeholder is put inside. If I type something, the placeholder goes away. Uh, and I'm gonna type in Shane at, yeah, let's see, yahoo.com. Let's see what happens, submit. And it does not match the requested format. Uh, that requested format is at Gmail. Let's try that. Submit. Nope, that's not either. So gmail.com. Let's click submit. And there we go. So you can actually, it'll actually do some basic validations, but you can also add a, a pattern um, expression and uh, increase that valid, those validation rules. So pretty neat stuff. Okay, and here's another neat feature that a lot of the new HTML5 uh, input elements support. Here, let me show you that real quick. What if I wanted to basically give some default emails to choose from? So I've got a element here and I've got a placeholder for a senator's email. So what if you wanted to give a list of senators? Say, say this is a submission form. You want to send a letter to your senators or something, right? Uh, that's the best that I've come up with. <laughs> All right, so I want to specify a list of senators. So I'm going to put default attribute of list equals default senators. And I'm going to go down below that input form. I'm going to use a new HTML element, HTML5 element called data list. Now to save time, I've already uh, prepared that list. I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste it. All right, so I've added an element called data list. You'll notice that it's called default senators and it matches the, the list attribute value. And I've got in that data list, I have options just like in the select box, right? Um, and by the way, you can use this data list with the select box. Um, so anyway, so I've got options. In these options, I have values and these are the values you can choose from. I've got Ronald McDonald, Daffy Duck, Mickey Mouse, Elmer Fudd, and Bugs Bunny. Uh, those are very famous senators. I de definitely recommend you write them and tell them how great of a job they're doing. All right, I'm going to click save and I'm going to click refresh. What will this do? Okay, didn't do anything or did it? Well, oh, look at there. There's a triangle. Pretty neat. Oh, gives me the list. And I can, you notice there's the recommended list that I just put in there. And it also kept track of. Um, you know, I think it's more of a Chrome thing there. It probably works in other browsers too, but it kept track of what I typed in before there, right? Pretty neat. So I can choose one of these and it fills it out for me. Another way I can do that, I wonder if I'd start typing. Yep, it showed me all of the bugs, all the ones that start with a B that are recommended. How about ones that have an A? Yep, there you go. There's A in those. How about with a D? Yep. How about E, L, Elmer Fudd? There you go. So it'll actually give the user a list to choose from. They can choose to enter one from that list. They can choose from that list. Um, or they can just type in, uh, uh, type it in whatever they want, as long as it meets, uh, meets the pattern. Let's see. Yep, that meets the pattern. So that's it. Pretty neat stuff. It's a way for you to go ahead and recommend uh, particular email addresses for your user to choose from. Pretty neat. Hey. That's all there is to it. Very neat. I hope you like that. So there's definitely a lot more uh, HTML5 input elements that are getting more specific to types. Instead of having a text box, you have a text box for email. You have a text box for phone. Pretty neat, pretty neat stuff. Hey, that's it for today's lesson. That's all there is to the email input type. If you have any questions, leave me a message below. If this is your first time watching us and you'd like to see more HTML or programming videos in general, hey, click the subscribe button and be sure to click that bell 
and leave us a message. What kind of uh, programming videos would you like to see? Leave that below. If you like this video, click like. If you disliked it, go ahead and, and click the dislike. But hey, leave a message. Let me know how we can make it better. How? Why did you dislike it? And how can we improve? Because our goal is, is really to help you, to help others learn how to program. And we'd like to uh, get input on how we can do that. So that would be very much appreciated. Again, hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope that you have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye.